Uh, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome again for our uh, lesson 2 uh, of our series um, <clears throat> for our um, you know uh, the one that we are uh, you know you know doing every Sunday the Fashionate Light Bible series is a series from the Gospel of Mark uh, Miracles and Mercy. Is it a 12 week study guide <clears throat> for all of us that we will uh, benefit to this uh, series. So May 31st to 2020. So welcome again for our sen, uh, you know, second Sunday of our lesson to come and uh, follow me. And this is the this is our topic uh, this morning, taken from the uh, Mark chapter one verse 14 uh, up to chapter three verses uh, you know one to six. So <clears throat> welcome to our uh, Sunday school, Achilles uh, uh, Street Christian Church, and uh, I want to welcome you. Okay, so let's uh, begin on our uh, Sunday school and uh, uh, let's bow our head uh, before we start and let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you today that you have given to all of us the time to, to listen to your word and, and uh, to be with others in the spirit. Thank you, Lord, uh, for today that uh, we have an opportunity to, to, uh, to, to teach and preach your word through this deep uh, 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 technology that we have thank you lord for your guidance and be be upon each one of us as we uh, follow your word to, uh, at this moment thank you lord for everything that you have given to us in jesus name we pray amen okay so bring your bible with you or uh, open your book <coughs> from the gospel of mark chapter one uh, we will start on uh, verse 14 of our uh, uh, series the passionate life bible study series from the gospel of mark miracles and mercy okay so let's uh, begin on our lesson two. Come, follow me. At last, the fulfillment of the age has come. It is time for the realm of God's kingdom to be experienced in its fullness. Let's turn our lives back to God and put our trust in the hope-filled gospel. Imagine you are a young Jewish man in the first century Galilee. One day a recognized holy man and teacher does something incredible. He says to you, come follow me. This would have been highly unusual because most teachers or rabbis in the time of Jesus, as they were called, were sought out by others. They didn't do the seeking, interested the students were sought out by others. They didn't do the seeking. Interested students would seek out, seek a teacher and ask him whether they could follow, not the other way around. So imagine their surprise when Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John were invited to follow Jesus. We are invited to do what this man did in response. Leave behind our former life and follow him into his new one to experience God's kingdom. When we do, we will discover what the disciples discovered. The acceptance, the healing, and the love of the one who came, not to call the religious elite, but everyday people who actually need the hope of a savior. So Jesus said the kind of life we have been waiting for has come. It is ready to enjoy when we follow him into feet into it. Have you answered this call? Continue reading Jesus' wonderful story and discover why he is who you have been waiting for for your whole life. I want to share with you 10 points from the Gospel of Mark about how Jesus minister and live and, and uh, preach and teach and heal people according to their needs. First, the first disciple of Jesus begins in verses 14 to 19. <clears throat> in verses 14 to 15, if you have the Bible with you, uh, turn on chapter 1 of Gospel of Mark, verses 14 to 15, and, and follow along with me. So while you're reading the verses, what is the good news? These first words spoken by Jesus in the book of Mark 
give the core of his teaching that the long-awaited Messiah has come to begin God's personal reign on earth. Many of the people who have heard this message since Jesus came have been oppressed, poor, struggling to make ends meet, and without hope. Jesus' words are good news because they offer freedom, spiritual blessings, and most importantly, the promise of eternal life in a perfect world where justice and peace prevail. In verses 16 to 19, you will see that we often assume that Jesus' 12 disciples were great men, faith from the first time they met Jesus. But they had to grow in their faith just as all believers do. This is apparently not the only time Jesus called Peter, James, and John to follow him. Although it took time for Jesus' call and his message to get through. So the important thing is that the disciples did follow Jesus. So in the same way, we may question and falter, but we must never stop following Jesus. So in verse 17, fishing was a major industry around the Sea of Galilee. Fishing with nets was the most common method. Jesus called the disciples to fish for people with the same energy they had used to fish of food. So the gospel would, would be like a net, lifting people from dark waters into the light of day and transforming their lives. Question, how, God, how can God use you or use us to fish for people's souls? There are so many ways to share the gospel of the Lord to our neighbors, to our friends, and our family members. God gave us a talent and a wisdom, and understanding, and, and skills how to talk to different people in our community. So discover what you have in yourselves. If you are good in something, maybe that's, that's the one that God gave you to use to share the word of God to, to, to so many people around you that you can share the word of God to them. How can we train new believers to find new seas and cast new nets where waters have never been fished before? So the gospel makes everyone missionaries of all God's people. We are Christian now and our responsibility now is to share the word of God to the people around us. We will not stop there. We will continue because we are children of God. And we have to share with them the promise that God gave us, the eternal life. The question is like, where are you casting your nets? So that is, that is the challenge to you for, for this lesson. So let us uh, let's be encouraged that God will use us one day. Okay? So number, number two, Jesus cast out an evil spirit from verses 21 to 28. So, turn on your verses 21 to 22. Because the temple in Jerusalem was too far for many Jews to travel to regularly for worship. So many towns had synagogues serving both as places of worship and as schools. So beginning in the days of Ezra, around 450 BC, a group of 10 Jewish men could start a synagogue. There, during the week, Jesus' voice were taught the Old Testament law. That law is the Moses law or the Mosaic law and the Jewish religion. Girls could not attend. Each Saturday, the Sabbath, the Jewish men would gather to listen to a rabbi teach from the scriptures. Because their synagogue had no permanent rabbi or teacher, it was customary for the synagogue leader to ask visiting teacher to speak or visiting rabbi to speak. Therefore, Jesus often taught in the synagogues in the towns he visited. So while the Jewish teachers often quoted from well-known rabbis to give their words more authority. So Jesus did not need to do this because Jesus is God. He knows exactly what the scriptures say and mean because he is the ultimate authority. So in verse 21, 
Jesus had recently moved to Capernaum from Nazareth, according to Matthew chapter 4, verse 12 to 13. So from Nazareth to Capernaum by bus is 2 hours and 30 minutes. When I went to Israel two, uh, two years ago, um, our bus uh, um, traveled from Nazareth to Capernaum, you know, it's 2 hours and, and, and 30 minutes. So you can see a lot of different places when, when you are traveling by bus. But if you love hiking and walking, there is a name given to this, to this trail. The name is the Jesus Trail. It is a 65 kilometer hiking and pilgrimage route in the Galilee region of Israel that traces the route Jesus may have walked, connecting many sites like Cana and the Mount of Beatitudes from his life and ministry. So it can be covered in the space of four days. So it starts in Nazareth, known as the city where Jesus grew up and goes all the way to Capernaum via, uh, via Sipori, Cana, 15, 15 kilometer walk, walking from Nazareth, Kibbutz Lavi, 13.9 kilometer from Cana, and Moshab Arbel and Mount of, of Beatitudes, 17 kilometer from Kibbutz Lavi, and from uh, Moshab Arbel to Capernaum is 18 kilometer. So, when I was there, um, I've been to uh, Capernaum, Nazareth, Cana, and Kibbutz Labi. So I spent two nights in Kibbutz Labi. And uh, while we are there, um, you know, a lot of uh, people in our group uh, went outside and imagined that uh, the Lord walked around the area because uh, according to the, uh, to the person who are, um, you know, uh, managing the, the Kibbutz Labi. Because Kibbutz means in Hebrew is, it's like a, it's like a, a village, okay, or a place to, to you know, where people are gathered around and and, and make a living through through uh, planting vegetable, raising cattle and poultry and in 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 everything. So it it was called kibbutz. So it's a place, uh, in in Lavi. So they name it the you know uh, other place. So I've been also to um, amount of beatitude. So. So I saw all of this, uh, you know, area. Then it 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 pretty uh, pretty much crosses the entire region of Galilee. So if you if you look at to the uh, to the background, <clears throat> this is the uh, the uh, the Galilee uh, region in the northern you know, part of Israel. The middle part is the uh, the Samaria, and then the the uh, the south part is the Negev, which is the Judea. Okay. So, so there are three different area in Israel, three, three, uh, three sub, uh, you know, um, uh, group of, of territories, you know. So, so I will tell you later about, you know, how this area become, become divided in the time of, of, of Jesus. So, it pretty much crosses the entire region of Galilee, though to be a crossroads of cultures and a gateway for trade since human being have been living there. So in the time of Jesus, Capernaum was a thriving town with great wealth as well as great sin and decadence because it was the headquarters for many Roman troops, pagan influence from all over the Roman Empire were uh, pervasive. This was an ideal place for Jesus to challenge both Jews and non-Jews with the good news of God's kingdom. So I, I went also to Capernaum because Capernaum is, is the center uh, during the time of Jesus, even in, in our time, in our present time, Capernaum also is the center for the uh, for the uh, uh, you know, for tourism, and in, uh, and also uh, because you know uh, Tiberias and Capernaum there were they were the busy city in in the Galilee uh, region. So I I explored the uh, the uh, the city of uh, Capernaum when when I was there. I saw the uh, the, the place traditionally said that Peter's house was located and also the white synagogue. So they're close to each other. So I saw all of them. And um, I, I, then I took a lot of pictures and videos. So if you want to see it, you can see in YouTube, uh, Rico Dagatan, and you can see all of the places that I've been, you know, uh, you know uh, visited in, 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 in Israel. So Capernaum is very busy in that time, you know, in the time of Jesus. 
even in our time, it's, it's still busy. But now there is a you know a COVID-19 pandemic problem. So so that you know the uh, traveling in in Israel is 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 prohibited. So the uh, you know uh, tourists are not allowed to to go to Israel at the moment until further notice. So I want to continue in verse 23 to 26 that that uh, some people uh, dismiss all accounts of the, uh, the, the demon possession as a primitive way of describing mental illness. So if you'll see the verse 23 to 26, it's telling a different situation in, in the time of Jesus. Although throughout history, mental illness has often been wrongly diagnosed as demon possession. Clearly a hostile outside force controlled the man described here. So John Mark emphasized Jesus conflict with evil powers to show his superiority over them. So he recorded many stories about Jesus uh, driving out evil spirits. So Jesus did not have to conduct an elaborate exorcism ritual. His word was enough to send out the evil spirit. So in, 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 in verses 23 to 24, if, if, if you read it in your own Bible, the evil spirit knew at once that Jesus was the Holy One sent from God. By including this event in Mark's Gospel, Mark was establishing Jesus' credentials, showing that even the spiritual underworld recognizes Jesus as the Messiah. So in verse 23, the evil spirit or demons are ruled by Satan, and they work to deceive and destroy people by, tem by tempting them to sin and to become enslaved to sin. We know that evil spirits were not created by Satan because God is the creator of all. Rather, they are fallen angels who join Satan in his rebellion. Though not all disease comes from Satan, demons can cause a person to become mute, to become deaf, blind, or out of control. They desire to distort the image of God in us, place in us from creation. But in every case where demons confronted Jesus, they lost their power. Thus, God limits what evil spirits can do. They can do nothing without Jesus' permission. So during Jesus' life on earth, Jesus were allowed to be very active to demonstrate once and for all, all Christ's power and authority over them. So number three, Jesus heals many people in Galilee, beginning from verses 29 to 43. In verses 29 to 31, each gospel writer had a slightly different perspective as he wrote. Thus, the comparable stories in the Gospels often highlight different details. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus touched the woman's hand. In, in the Gospel of Mark, he touched her hand and helped her sit up. In the Gospel of Luke, he spoke to the fever and it left her. The accounts do not conflict. Just as four people might witness the same event and all recounts detail, uh, different details. So each gospel writer emphasized different details of this story in order to highlight certain characteristics of Jesus. In verses 32 to 33, the people came to Jesus in the evening after sunset. That, that day had been the Sabbath, according to verse 21, their day of rest lasting from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday. The Jewish leaders had proclaimed that healing on the Sabbath was against their religious law according to Matthew chapter 12 verse 10 and Luke chapter 13 verse 14. The people did not want to break this law or the law that prohibited traveling on the Sabbath. So they waited. So after the sun went down on Saturday, the crowds were free to find Jesus. So he could heal them. In verse 34, why did not Jesus want the demons to reveal who he was? First, by commanding the demons to remain silent, Jesus proved his authority and power over them. Second, Jesus wanted the people to believe that he was the Messiah because of what he said and did, not because the demons' words and testimonies. Third, Jesus wanted to reveal his identity as the Messiah according to his timetable, not according to Satan's timetable. Satan wanted the people to follow Jesus 
around for what they could get out of him, not because he was the Son of God, who could truly set them free from sin's guilt and power. Number four, Jesus preaches in Galilee. Uh, verses 35 to, to 39. I want to show you something that I bought in, uh, in uh, Caesarea Philippi, uh, in the northern uh, part of, of Israel, somewhere in this area, right here. Okay? So, I bought this to, to keep us as remembrance and use this as, as a tool when I uh, teach and preach the, uh, the, the word so that people will understand what I'm talking about. So, in this poster, uh, usually it's supposed to be like this. So, this is, this is the right, uh, you know, standing map. This is the uh, north, and this is the south, and this is the east, and this is the west. So, I will do this because... Because the letters are in this level. So we are now facing west. This is east. This is south. And this is north. Okay. So Jesus preached and teach in the Sea of Galilee in the Galilee region. So, so, so most of these places Jesus visited. And, and every places and villages that Jesus went. He, he did a lot of miracles, you know, healing different people from their diseases. And, and a lot of people believe in Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And, and um, the, uh, the, the places that Jesus always went to, you know, like from, from Nazareth to Capernaum, this is Nazareth, his, his hometown, and this is uh, Cana, where he... Um, uh, you know, change the water to wine, the first miracle or the first sign. So from, from Nazareth to Cana and then Cana to, to Tabha, where Jesus changed uh, and then uh, multiplied the, the fish and the bread. Okay, then and then feeds, uh, you know, more than 4,000 people, you know, in his time. So this is Tabha and this is the Mount of Beatitudes where he delivered his, uh, you know, sermon in the Mount. I saw all of this when I went there two years ago. So, so from here, Mount of Beatitudes, Jesus went. Uh, Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. So this is Capernaum. So Jesus always going back and forth to this to these places, you know, and and uh, this is this is his uh, his uh, trail, you know, he walks. So um, according to the uh, to the Jewish people and Israeli people who love hikings and walking, it took four days to walk from Nazareth to, to Capernaum. So, let me continue about Jesus' preaches in Galilee. In, in verses 36 to 38, Apostle Peter and, and the other disciples seems to have had an agenda for Jesus. But Jesus was determined to preach. We must be careful not to expect the Savior to do our will. Instead, we must submit to Jesus and what he wants to do in us and through us, not us, to Jesus. So in, verses 30, in verse 39, the Romans, during the time of Jesus or before the birth of Jesus, divided the land of Israel into three separate regions. The Galilee in the north, and this is the Galilee, and then Samaria in the middle, and Judea. In the south, all right. So Jesus, you know, did much of his ministry in this area because Galilee was the northernmost region, an area about sixty miles long and thirty miles wide. It was an ideal place for Jesus to teach because there were over two hundred fifty towns concentrated there, with many synagogues around. So number five, Jesus heals. A man with leprosy, beginning from verses 40 to 45. In verses 40 to 41, in keeping with the law of Moses in Leviticus chapter 13 and 14, Jewish leaders declared people with leprosy unclean. Okay, so we are in, sorry, uh, we are in, uh, yeah, that's right. So, leprosy was considered an extremely contagious skin disease. Alright? This means that 
people who had leprosy were not able to participate in any religious or social activities. Sometimes the uh, leprosy and the COVID-19 pandemic disease or, or virus, they're almost similar in, in, in appearance because in our time, people are afraid to go with the other people that they don't know. It's like a person have lost a, a, a leprosy because if they, if they don't know people and then they might get the virus from, from them. So they, they don't want to be close to any people because they, we don't know who's having the COVID-19. So same thing with the leprosy. Leprosy you can see visibly, but COVID-19 virus you can't see it because it's, it's, it's inside of, of the person. So that's why you have to protect ourselves. But, but leprosy is different. This means that people who had leprosy were not able to participate in any religious or social activities. Because the law said that contact with any unclean person made the other person unclean too. So some people even throw rocks at those with leprosy to keep them at a safe distance. So even in the, even the mention of the name of this disabling disease terrified people, it's also the same to us you know, in, our, in, in, in our time. If you hear COVID-19 virus, people are scared. People doesn't want to, you know, you know, deal with this. They stay home. They don't want to, you know, you know, you know, unless uh, they, they go out to buy their food, you know, and, but, but just to go for no reason, they don't want to go out because they're afraid. So even, even, you know, when, when mention of the name of this disabling disease, terrified people. So how outstanding it was then when Jesus reached out and touched this man who had leprosy. He is God, so he could heal himself. However, we must note that this great compassion for this man moved him to break long-standing rules and traditions and take the risk of touching and healing this desperate man. The Jewish religious leaders had lost sight of the intent of God's word. They had put more priority on following their human-made rules than helping, serving, and blessing others. The real value of a person is inside, not outside. And although a person's body may be diseased or deformed, the person inside is no less valuable to God. In a sense, we are all like the people with leprosy in the Bible because we have all been deformed by the ugliness of sin. By sending His Son, Jesus Christ, God has touched us, giving us the opportunity to be healed. In verses 43 to 44, Although leprosy itself was incurable, many different types of skin diseases were classified together as leprosy. So according to the Old Testament law about leprosy in Le Leviticus chapter 13 and 14, when a person who had one of these diseases was cured, he or she had to go to a priest to be examined. Then the healed person was to give a thank offering at the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus demonstrated his complete regard for God's law by adhering to it and sending this man to the priest. Sending a person healed of leprosy to a priest would also have certified to the community that this person was allowed to return home. So Jesus always adhered to God's law found in the scripture, but he did not always uphold the additional laws made up by the religious leaders, which unlike God's laws or mosaical laws were not designed to help us love God and our neighbors. That is the truth. So number six, Jesus heals a paralyzed man in, in, in Galilee uh, in chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. If you look uh, on your Bible on chapter 2 verse 3, the paralyzed man need move his friends to action and they brought him to Jesus. When you recognize someone's need, do you act? Of course. Many people have physical and spiritual needs you can meet, either by yourself or with others who are also concerned. Human need move these four men. 